Hi, I'm Simon from Astro Dog. Um, we're here in Peranuth, no near Penzance, and we've got an incredible sunset happening behind us. There's lots of amazing celestial events to look out for throughout this September, including a total lunar eclipse. So without further ado, let's dive in. Sunrise and sunset times throughout September will be as follows. On the 1st, the sun will rise at 6.18am and set at 7.58pm. On the 11th, the sun will rise at 6.36am and set at 7.34pm. On the 21st, the sun will rise at 6.53am and set at 7.10pm. And on the 30th, the sun will rise at 7.09am and set at 6.48pm. Moon phases now. The moon reached first quarter on the 31st of August and will start the month of September as a waxing gibbous. Full moon will be on the 7th. Last quarter will be on the 14th, new moon will be on the 21st, and first quarter will be on the 29th. As usual, the moon will be paying some close visits to other celestial objects this month, and these meetings will be discussed in more detail in our highlights section. For all the aurora chasers, we are now truly within the aurora season, and the darker nights of September mean it will be much easier to spot the northern lights. Historical research also shows that the times around the equinoxes are more likely to show geomagnetic activity, and so due to the autumn equinox this month, there may be an increased chance of spotting the northern lights throughout the month of September too. Let's all keep our fingers crossed for more great displays, and if you'd like to be kept in the loop with regular updates and alerts for possible aurora displays, please follow our Facebook page. For Milky Way fanatics, September is unfortunately the end of the Milky Way core season here in the UK, and September offers the last chances to capture photographs of the galactic centre in the early evening towards the south so make sure you make the most of the Milky Way car season while it lasts. On to general nighttime sights now. Looking towards the north throughout September, Cygnus the Swan, King Cepheus and Lacerta the Lizard are high in the sky near the zenith in the middle of the night. Taurus the Bull and Auriga the Charioteer are now visible rising in the east. The Great Bear Ursa Major can be seen the right way up above the northern horizon, and Bootes the Herdsman along with Serpent's Kaput can be seen setting in the west. Looking south, the asterism, the summer triangle, remains dominant in the southern skies, and the great square of Pegasus is becoming more prominent, rising higher in the sky. The zodiacal constellation of Capricornus and Aquarius are now fairly easy to observe above the southern horizon. The sea monster Cetus is rising in the east with Pisces and Aries easily visible above, and towards the west, Libra and Scorpius have now disappeared from view, with the serpent bearer Ophiuchus and the archer Sagittarius following behind. General bright planet viewing now. The observing window for planet Jupiter is getting better throughout September, and as the month progresses, Jupiter will become much easier to spot as it continues to rise higher and move away from the Sun. Jupiter remains in Gemini throughout September. Evening planet Mars is unfortunately too close to the Sun to be observable this September, and will remain so for quite a while to come. Mars remains in Virgo this month. Throughout September, morning planet Venus will remain fairly easy to spot in the early morning eastern skies before sunrise, but is gradually moving closer to the sun. Venus starts the month in Cancer and ends September in Leo. September is an excellent time to observe Saturn as the amazing ring planet reaches opposition on the 21st. Saturn starts the month in Pisces, but ends September just within the boundaries of Aquarius. The speedy and elusive planet Mercury will be easiest to spot at the start of September rising around 70 minutes before sunrise on the 1st. After the 1st, Mercury will become harder to spot as it continues to move closer to the Sun and reaches superior conjunction on the 13th. From here, Mercury will be poorly positioned for the rest of the month. Mercury starts the month in Leo and ends the month in Virgo. Okay, let's begin looking at our highlights for the month of September. There's a great selection of celestial events to look out for this month, and kicking off the month will be the full moon of September, plus an amazing total lunar eclipse. The night of the 7th will host the full moon of September, which is known to some as the Harvest Moon. Don't worry if you don't get to see the moon on the 7th, it will also appear full on the nights adjacent to the 7th too. The evening of the 7th will also host another very special celestial event, a total lunar eclipse. If you can remember the total lunar eclipse that happened back in March this year, this September's lunar eclipse will be sort of a mirror of the event that happened in March. Whereas in March the moon reached totality just minutes before it set, this September, the moon will rise during totality and slowly move out of the Earth's shadow as it rises higher in the sky. On this night, the moon will rise at around 7.41pm, and at this moment, the moon will be completely covered by the Earth's umbral shadow and will appear much darker and red in colour than usual. 
totality will end at 7.53 p.m. And from this moment, the moon will slowly move out of the Earth's shadow and become brighter as it rises higher in the sky. The eclipse will end at roughly 8.57 p.m. A clear view of the eastern horizon will be necessary to view this lunar eclipse, and a pair of binoculars or a telescope may help you locate the moon as it rises. As the moon will appear much darker when it is rising, it may be quite hard to spot as it begins to peak above the horizon, so be prepared for a challenge. We can't wait for this special event, and we recommend you all head out to witness it too. The evening after the lunar eclipse, the 98% illuminated waning gibbous moon will pay a close visit to the planets Saturn and Neptune. Look for a bright star-like object below the moon, and this will be the planet Saturn. Neptune, however, will require a pair of binoculars or a telescope to observe. Scan the area of sky between the moon and Saturn, and you might find a faint blue-coloured star-like point of light. If you can, that's Neptune. On the evening of the 12th, the 68% illuminated waning gibbous moon will travel in front of the Pleiades star cluster, which is also known as the Seven Sisters. This occultation will occur just as the moon has risen, so a clear view toward the eastern horizon will be required to view this event, and a pair of binoculars or a telescope will help too. On the morning of the 16th, the 31% illuminated waning crescent moon will appear close by to the bright gas giant planet Jupiter. Look towards the east in the early morning hours to observe this pairing. On the morning of the 19th, the 7% illuminated waning crescent moon will appear close by to the super bright planet Venus and the bright star Regulus of Leo. Look towards the eastern horizon in the early morning to view this meeting. Later on in the same day, during full daylight, the 5% illuminated waning crescent moon will travel in front of Venus blocking it from view. As this occultation will occur during daytime, this will require the aid of a pair of binoculars or a telescope to observe. The moon will begin to travel in front of Venus at roughly 12.45pm and the occultation will end at around 2.11pm. On the morning of the 21st, the ring planet Saturn reaches what is known as opposition. An opposition is an event that occurs when a planet is in alignment with the Sun and Earth, with the planets on the opposite side of the Earth compared to the Sun. During this time, a planet will appear larger and brighter than at any other time of the year. This means that the night of the 20th and the night surrounding the 20th may possibly be the best time of year to observe and or capture images of the amazing planet Saturn. On the 21st of September, the moon will reach its new phase, leaving the skies free from natural light pollution. This means the nights on and around the 21st will be ideal for viewing faint objects in the night sky and are taking photographs of the night sky. The day of the 22nd of September will be the Northern Hemisphere's autumn equinox. On this day, the sun will rise exactly to the east and set exactly in the west, and every country on Earth will experience roughly the same amount of daytime and nighttime. The autumn equinox marks the astronomical change of season from summer to autumn, and from this moment onwards, every following day until the spring equinox next March, nighttime will be longer than daytime. On the morning of the 23rd, the distant planet Neptune reaches opposition. This means that the night of the 22nd and the night surrounding the 22nd may possibly be the best time of year to observe and or capture images of the amazing planet Neptune. If you wish to observe Neptune, you will require the aid of a pair of binoculars or a telescope. Scan the area of sky just above and left of bright planet Saturn, and you may be able to spot the faint blue coloured star-like point of light, which is the planet Neptune. And our final highlight for the month of September will be on the 27th, when the 29% waxing crescent moon will appear close by to the brightest star of the constellation Scorpius, the star Antares. This will be a tough pairing to spot in the bright evening twilight, requiring a pair of binoculars and a clear view of the southwestern horizon just after sunset. So as you can see, there's lots of amazing events to look out for throughout this September, and we hope you get to enjoy some of them when you're out under the night skies. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and leave us a comment in the comment section. And as always, if you head out to enjoy the night sky at any point in the near future, we wish you good luck and clear skies.